Hi there. Today I'm going to review Red Sky Morning, which is the seventh in the series of James Reese thrillers by Jack Carr. Now Jack Carr, <clears throat> I've reviewed his previous books, so I may have said this before, but he grew up as a, a as a boy. Um, on a diet of the famous thrillers written by Ian Fleming, Tom Clancy, Frederick Forsyth, and so on. And he had an ambition, even as a, a lad, to write uh, such thrillers himself. But his other ambition was to join the military, specifically the SEAL teams. And uh, he did. He uh, enlisted uh, initially and um, what this meant was that he served um, with the ability to acquire quite a skill set because the enlisted guys can put in for all the courses, for example, sniper and so on. And once he'd um, gone through these courses, he then... Um, accepted a commission and became a naval a naval officer, SEAL officer. Um, and after he finished his career as a SEAL, he indeed went into writing and um, his first thriller, The Terminal List, was a tremendous success and it was the first of the uh, James Reese books. As soon as I started reading Red Sky Morning, I had a sense of the book, the famous book by Tom Clancy, The Hunt for Red October, because it starts uh, aboard a submarine. And in many, many ways, it's, it's a counter, not a counter, but it's, it's um, similar to uh, what you read uh, at the beginning of um, Hunt for Red October and um, there is however um, a, a, a much more uh, much different out outcome uh, and then there's a couple of uh, echoes of Ian Fleming for example uh, one of the intelligence bases cover address is Universal Exports uh, one of the characters drives a uh, racing green Bentley with Amherst Villiers superchargers, which was uh, Bond's uh, favourite car in the books, uh, not so much in the films. Uh, and at the end of the book, uh, Jack Carr writes uh, quite a bit about his influences and his acknowledgements and so on. And he openly... Um, says that he um, included these nods to his favourite thriller writers and it was the anniversary, I think, of um, the publication of Hunt for Red October and so on. So th those um, echoes I was getting were, were deliberate. They were, they were part of it. And they did add to my enjoyment of it. Obviously, there's probably quite a few references I didn't pick up by... Uh, writers I wasn't familiar with. So it, it really was um, interesting to have these things peppered throughout. The plot con concerns the machinations of China, assisted by a corrupt American politician. And um, not to put too fine a point on it, she does remind me uh, very much of a, a certain high-profile um, California female politician. And uh, Chan is also aided by an equally traitorous uh, tech billionaire. <clears throat> I'm not going to go too much into the plot because um, I don't want to spoil it for you. There's so much um, that, uh, as, as the plot unfurls, there's so many twists and turns and um, things that almost leave you gasping that I, I, I would spoil your enjoyment. However, 
Um, Jack Carr researches his material in depth and um, what he tells us about the Chinese threat is quite an eye-opener. Um, their um, cyber and espionage and sabotage activities and their um, attempts to suborn um, influence in Western countries and to um, infect our culture uh, in, in ways that will weaken us uh, was quite striking. Um, just one of the things he mentions is that uh, a Chinese entity tried to buy the Hotel Coronado, which overlooks the San Diego base where the SEAL strain and other US naval assets are deployed. It wasn't successful, but they tried to do it. But similarly, uh, he, he says they, tr they did buy the Rossley Hotel, which overlooks uh, Fas Lane, our nuclear uh, submarine base. So I looked it up, and uh, sure enough, that's true. It's owned by China. And, um, you know, our government, um, from Cameron to Johnson, really were turned a blind eye to the uh, Ch Chinese threat. Um, he also details some horrific torture methods employed by China and um, it, it, it really does make grim reading. There's a lot of combat, as you might expect, and particularly if you read the previous books. Um, James Reese is very, very adept. He keeps his skills in close quarter combat up to a very high level. And right from early on in the book, his uh, skills are tested and he uh, kills his enemies with firearms, knives, a tomahawk, a tactical pen and his bare hands. <coughs> Jack Carr is a kit enthusiast and he does enumerate and um, explain and detail the various items of kit, the weapons, the vehicles, aircraft, um, communications equipment, digital equipment, uh, clothing even. Um, and I, I'm something of a kit enthusiast myself, as you know, I'm, I review quite a bit of kit, but um, Jack Carr takes it to another level. And I would gently suggest that perhaps we don't really need to know that when he makes a cup of coffee, um, the model of the coffee ma machine, the brand of the coffee, and the type of knife he uses to open the packet of coffee. I think really we can just say he makes a cup of coffee. However, <clears throat> I, I find that the... Um, emphasis on kit to be to be fine a central plot theme is artificial intelligence AI with an all-knowing machine uh, termed Alice now Alice was introduced in the previous book but even in the relatively short in interval between the publishing of these two books, our understanding and our fear of AI has grown a lot. And it makes Alice more um, accessible to us. We understand it. And it really does add to the story. And uh, I, I, I found it to be a very interesting and... Uh, at the same time, a very foreboding uh, look into the future, the near future. Jack Carr knows the world of special operations and paramilitary intelligence activities and were taken deep into some of these operational methods. For example, 
um, highly detailed uh, planning and um, deployment of uh, clandestine insertion by tactical freefall from a civilian aircraft. Um, it, it, there's very few authors with the necessary um, <clears throat> tactical knowledge uh, and experience and the ability to write as well that can pull this off. And as the story races to a breathtaking climax, we glimpse the world of high-tech weapons deployed by elite pro-operators. Um, the guys that he uses in the final operation uh, are from very, very specialised units um, whose existence is still secret, uh, uh, although factual. And I, th I think uh, it, it, you'll find it interesting that it does add to the um, factual base to the, the story. I've been a fan of the James Reese books right from the beginning. And this latest offering is well up to his high standard. And in fact, it may well be the best. And um, it will appeal to existing fans, but uh, as I'm recording this, it's number one in the New York Times bestsellers. So it's, it's obviously gathering new fans as well. <clears throat> the Terminal List, the first book, was serialised as a TV drama, which um, was very, very well accepted to the point where they commissioned a prequel series, uh, which will be coming out in 2025 and is highly anticipated. So all in all, um, the publication of, of a new uh, Jack Carr is always eagerly awaited and uh, the Red Sky Morning uh, is well, well worth your time and effort to read and uh, <clears throat> we've now got to wait a year for the next one.